Welcome to Second Opinion, the review show here on the Nexus. I am your host, Ryan Rampersad, and today I will be reviewing the Sony MDR V6 Studio Headphones. Find the show notes for this episode at the nexus.tv slash SO72. Hello, and welcome back to our headphone series. Today I will be talking about the Sony MDR V6 headphones. These headphones go way back, and I have had a pair for many years now myself. Unfortunately, not quite as long as they've been out. These headphones have somehow existed since 1985. I first purchased my pair of V6s a few years ago when I was setting up the studio. I personally had purchased an ATH M40 FS for myself as the primary producer of the Nexus podcast way back when. But I also needed to have some additional headphones in the studio for when guests were here, such as um, when we were recording the legendary and premier weekly show at the Nexus. Now, because of that, I've been experienced with varieties of headphones, not just the ATH line, but also this Sony line. Now, what's interesting about MDR V6 is they've been out for so long. Now, they have been sold for so long, over three decades at this point. They first came out in 1985, and they've been sold effectively since then. There have been a few different revisions. There are now three major revisions of the same kind of line. Now, they're not all identical, but they're effectively, in Sony's eyes, the same. I think it's important to note that these headphones effectively aren't acknowledged by Sony anymore. They're basically discontinued now. That being said, you can still buy them for around $70 to $80 from Amazon New. I'll tell you about a story about that later, but you'll also still be able to pick them up pretty much anywhere that still sells high-end studio quality equipment. If you need to get these, you can still get these. If you need good, well-known reference headphones, you know where to go. One of the interesting things about editing audio, especially mastering audio as a producer, is that reference equipment is very important. If you're editing your sound on these headphones and they break, ideally you would get headphones that sound very similar. Well, what better way to reproduce sound than to have identical equipment? These headphones are extremely common. If you ever watch any studio editing or studio producing or studio mastering, if you watch any video clips like that, you'll often see these kind of not talked about, but somebody wearing them. If you ever see anybody doing voiceover work, you might even see them wearing these. They're great for pretty much any purpose. Pricing aside, which is pretty good, let's talk about the sound quality. So in terms of reference headphones, I would say these are on the lower end of acceptable. Now, that's my honest opinion at this point. I've been exposed to other headphones over time, but what these are good for is buying them in bulk and having everybody be pretty content with using them. Now, here's why. I think there's a a little bit of muddling on the high end. I think the lows are sort of under-accentuated, and I think the mids are a little blurry. Now, that being said, I think these are totally serviceable headphones. I think these are great because of other factors. The sound is good enough. Anybody listening to these during a podcast, for example, will have no issue listening with them to their own voice. They'll understand what they're hearing, they will accept it, and they'll move on. Should you use these for traditional audio mixing work? Maybe not. Here's a really good quote from 1987 from an industry journalist. Throw away your loudspeakers. There is now what may be the most perfect transducer yet made by man. Recently, I auditioned a pair of Sony MDR V6 studio headphones, then purchased them. There are not enough superlatives in the dictionary to describe the performance of these headphones. Now, in 1987, that may have been true. Since then, however, I think headphone technology has come quite a bit further. Now, again, they're not bad. They're great. They're fine. They're adequate. I think I kind of moved the slope down there as I keep describing them, but that's okay. Sound quality is not all there is. Now, if you listen to these headphones, you will think, wow, these sound just fine. These are not Bose headphones. These are not Beats headphones. These are not Audio-Technica headphones. 
These are not Sennheiser headphones. These are Sony class headphones. They have a particular sound to them, and that's okay. Let's talk about some of the other important aspects of the MDR V6 headphones. Durability is a pretty important factor. Now, how durable are these? Well, I've had a set of these for over a year now, a set of four, in fact. But I actually had a single pair of these headphones way back since 2011, basically, when we started this network, way back when. Now, they've held up just fine over that time. I've actually been very happy with them. They have somehow been able to make it through years and years of abuse here in the studio. Now, here's why I say that. You know, all headphones have these pads, these ear pads. They can erode over time. They can uh, crack and then start peeling and then start uh, basically getting everywhere and making a mess. Over time, the padding can easily decompress and become much worse than it was when they were new and fresh. You can, however, buy replacement pads for the MDR-V6 still, even though they're discontinued. There's no problem, and they're basically compatible with the uh, 7506, the other variant of this line. Now, the other thing that's really important, the pads aside, I think are the cables and the other important piece, which are the strange little wires that connect from the band to the individual ear cups. So let me describe that. So on these headphones, you will see a tiny little wire coming out of the side of the headphones that connect the band to the actual cup. And it's a very thin wire. Uh, it's thinner than a USB cable. It's thinner than pretty much any other cable that you'll probably experience using day to day. The question I have is over a 10 year time period or in actual studio use, you know, we're kind of a hypothetical pseudo studio here. Would these actually catch on something and tear or rip or become exposed in some way? I kind of am scared with those wires being exposed like that. There's no sheathing. There's, they're not very thick. They're flexible enough to be adjusted for sure, but man, they sure are there. I think the other important thing to consider about these headphones are the included cables. Well, included cable. There's only one. And it's a fixed cable that goes directly into the headphone. So on the right side, the cable enters the headphone and it terminates with a 3.5 millimeter jack. And it has a coiled cable in the middle of that. Uh, the coiled uh, version is very nice. I highly recommend getting coiled cables. But uh, it's kind of a bummer that you can't replace the cable without effectively taking the headphone apart itself. The other interesting thing is uh which is sort of not a durability thing but kind of a really nice feature is the cable terminates at a 3.5 millimeter jack but the jack terminates normally but right before it there's actually a special but optional not proprietary set of screw teeth so you could if if you had a uh quarter inch adapter that had teeth you could screw it in place and so that it would not dislodge from the 3.5 millimeter jack there. Now, that's all great, but again, durability is sort of the question here, right? So your 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 dongles won't be lost, your your adapters won't be lost, but your cable might need to be replaced at some point, uh especially if you tug and pull on this a lot. I think another question that you might have is what's the durability of the band? Now, in my in my opinion, the band is so featureless. You know, it's it's really just some felt and some fake leather um, stripped together over some uh, small pieces of metal. Eh, that's probably not going anywhere, and it's probably not going to break too badly. Uh, these don't fold. Don't do that. But otherwise, they're fine. Speaking of the band, let's talk about fit and comfort. So... As far as comfort goes, I think they're pretty average. They're not super padded. They're not, you know, two inches thick. They're probably uh, three-quarter inch thick pads. Pretty okay. I would say that the uh, ear cavity on the pads are adequate for my ears. Um, you can wear these pretty much 
for hours, in my opinion, if you have even large ears, the pressure is not very great. The band pressure is not very great. It's a very, very thin band, though. So if you needed to make it last forever, that might not work because I'm sure it'll start to wear away. Portability is actually a pro with these. These actually fold up very well. So the band actually has two flexible points where they will snap upward and fold in onto the band. And then once they're folded onto the band, you can just pivot the headphone cups to be side by side. And now they've gone from being face shaped to now being forehead shaped. I think that's how I would describe it. I mean, that's how it looks to me. Uh, suffice it to say, if you look at a picture, you'll understand immediately. They do get a lot smaller and they're much easier to carry around in a bag, even without a special bag, than some other headphones that need to basically be at full size all the time. Speaking of bags, this product comes with a bag. And this is where I will tell you about the story relative to Amazon availability. So as you might have heard, this product is pretty old. And in the old days, these used to ship with a nice leatherette bag. They no longer ship with that bag, it seems. They now ship with some type of nylon fiber bag. It's not really bad by any means. In some ways, it's a little bit nicer because the old style leatherette bag was very thick and kind of hard to move around inside of a backpack or, or another bag of some sort. The leather, uh, the, the nylon bag is a little bit more flexible and so that it's a little bit easier to move around and it feels like it takes up less volume. But the problem is there is no documentation that says the nylon bag is the official bag for this product. So there has been speculation in many Amazon and third-party reviews that the nylon bag is a sign of the headphones that you received being counterfeit. Now, I don't think that's necessarily true. The 7506 appears to also have the same bag, and those are listed on the pro.sony website, while the MDR V6 headphones are not, because they're effectively discontinued, and Sony refuses to even acknowledge discontinued products. So I think it's okay that you're getting an older or you're getting older headphones with a newer bag, but there's just no documentation about it. I think it's okay. I don't think it's a sign of being counterfeit, but you always run that risk with Amazon, right? At the end of all of this, should you be buying these headphones? Well, probably not. You should not be buying old 1985 class equipment today. There are alternatives. You could be purchasing the MDR 7506 headphones. These are the alternative models. Now, when I was rebuilding the studio last year in 2018, I decided to actually intentionally buy all identical headphones. Consistency was more important to me than more modern headphones being available here in the studio. And I figured if anybody wanted special headphones, they could bring them with them. Nobody's complained since. Now, that being said, there are other headphones from other brands. Sennheiser makes amazing open back headphones, which make for an actual much better mastering and producing experience if you can afford that kind of loud environment situation. ATH from Audio-Technica, those headphones are actually almost superior because not only can you listen to them for studio work, you can listen to them for just general audio usage. Well, thank you for listening to this episode of Second Opinion, the review show here on The Nexus. You can find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash SO72. I am your host, Ryan Rampersad, and you can find me just about everywhere, but especially on Twitter at RyanMR, and of course, on my website, RyanRampersad.com. Second Opinion is licensed under Creative Commons. You can leave comments for us on previous episodes, this episode, and all future episodes at reddit.com slash r slash the Nexus TV. And of course, if you would like to support us reviewing really fun things, whether they be old or new, you can help us and support us on Patreon by subscribing at patreon.com slash the Nexus TV. Have a good one.
The Nexus. The Nexus. The Nexus TV. Podcasts from, from the, the Technological, technological Convergence. convergence.